herd immunity is basically the idea that if you get sick with a lot of infectious diseases, your immune system kicks in and it helps you survive the infection. And as a part of that, you build this, what we call an immunological memory, a memory of the infection. And this means that for a lot of infectious diseases, if you then are exposed to the same virus or the same disease again, your immune system has a head start and is able to combat the infection very well. And so you tend not to get sick. And this is exactly how vaccines work. We sort of shortcut that process without you having to get sick. What this means is that in a whole population, if a disease, or in this case, a virus, starts to spread through the population, many people will get sick, but many people will also recover and they will have this immune memory that will allow them to fight the infection again. And once a certain portion of the population has become immune to this disease, the virus can stop circulating in the population, which means that another person won't get infected. No, it really doesn't, not as a strategy. Um, and I think that there's been some miscommunication in the information that's been relayed from the government. I don't really, and I really hope I'm correct in this, but I don't think that the government strategy was actually to say, we're not gonna do anything and we're just gonna let herd immunity develop, that that's our strategy. Herd immunity is a relevant thing to be discussing in terms of this pandemic, but as a potential outcome of the pandemic, not necessarily as a strategy. It's not something that you're actively doing. It's more of an outcome. The World Health Organization has been putting out a very clear message of what countries around the world can do. This is to, you know, prepare and inform, to detect and isolate, and to reduce the transmission. And this is great. And some countries have been doing this extremely well. And I think South Korea is a very good example. They had a rapid increase in the number of cases, but their case numbers have dropped dramatically in recent days. And partly that's due to the fact that they are testing almost everybody that they can, everybody that might be sick. They're tracing who they've come in contact with. They're ensuring isolation. They're preparing the population and they're increasing their, their hospital capacity. So they're doing an extremely good job with all of the pillars of the WHO response. But then you have countries like the UK and the US that are only testing the sickest patients, that are specifically not testing the general population, not testing people that have mild illness, even though the data right now suggests that people with mild illness at early stages of the disease are the ones that spread the virus the best. But it's also important to remember that, you know, everybody in the population can help mitigate the spread of this disease in making sure that, you know, you're practicing very good hygiene, you're making sure you're washing your hands, you're not touching your face where you might spread the virus. If you're sick, you're staying at home, you're coughing or sneezing into a tissue, and that you're paying attention to this sort of concept of social distancing. It's uncomfortable, it's not a pleasant way to be spending a couple weeks, but the earlier we can act, this has a huge impact on the spread of the disease.